Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, what we're going to do is move the aircraft over to the vantage point over to look at the uh, autopilot a little bit to get an idea of what's going on here with our different climb modes. Now in the corner of our PFD right now you see SPDT. That's speed on thrust. That means our speed is being controlled by our thrust levers. Now, that sounds like the way it should be, right? Well, we can also have a speed on elevator mode, or SPDE. Speed on elevator means that the thrust setting is either going to be in its uh, maximum allowable by the FADEC or the whichever is being commanded, so as a cruise power, or clock power, or takeoff power, or uh, an idle descent, flight level change descent. And that's with the thrust levers on and auto throttle. Uh, so, let's say we want to climb the aircraft up to 14,000 feet. We have a couple different ways we can do this. Let's go to 14. There's 14 set. We can do this in flight path angle to start. So I want to command a 2 degree climb. So there's your 2.0 on the PFD and the aircraft's going to start its climb at 2 degrees. We're still in speed on thrust, which means the aircraft is uh, moving the thrust levers to maintain speed, and the altitude selector is being controlled independently. So it's going to maintain its flight path angle. In a climb, this can get you into trouble. If you command an unattainable angle, so let's command like, I don't know, 5 degrees nose up. Eventually, let's go 6, six degrees on the climb. Eventually, it's going to reach its limit. 96% is the limit speed is going to drop off. We'll keep it climbing up just to get an idea of uh, how this will look. Now, basic aerodynamics tells you that eventually the aircraft's going to stall if it continues to lose uh, speed. So, um, we can protect this by going into speed on elevator. So let's go flight level change. Flight level change now is going to lower the nose to maintain 290 knots at climb power in the climb mode of flight level change. It should not uh, descend. If it descends, it might descend a tiny little bit momentarily before it corrects itself. And you can see there it did not descend at all to, uh, to maintain that. Typically in the real world aircraft, we will climb and flight level change. Um, this way we have speed protections. The chance of stalling is pretty low. You'd have to select a speed into the red tape or just not be paying attention to your speed bug at all, uh, which is unlikely as a, a two-crew aircraft. Um, we also have vertical speed, which is a speed on thrust mode, which means speed is controlled uh, by the thrust levers, and we can command an unattainable climb rate. Uh, we'll just keep scrolling that up, and it's, it's going to level off here in ACL, so we're not going to get too much out of it. Um, but you, see, you get the idea. So speed on elevator is where you'd like to be for your climb. Now there's two sections of uh, speed on elevator modes. Your flight level change in green means that it's... Uh, raw data. It's whatever you're selecting. Flight level change in pink uh, is going to mean it's going with your VNAV profile. So we can see actually we have a VNAV profile here now which really worked out perfect for timing. I'm going to put the aircraft into a VNAV descent. So now we're in purple speeds, the air purple mode. The uh, aircraft is uh, matching its VNAV. And we're going to just select that altitude. Now it's going to dive because I've really confused it with the climb here that it didn't have programmed in the, uh, the box. So if you're going to change your altitude, to reset that in your perfect in. Um, so right now it's going to run VPath VASL. Effectively what it's trying to do is just get the aircraft down back on the path, which we can see our path down here with our vertical path tool. This tool is awesome. Uh, it's my favorite feature on the aircraft. It makes flying so easy because we can line up if we need to cross Matty at a certain altitude over here. We can do that by getting this green line to line up with uh, the point. Right now we can see we're going to cross Maddie at our selected altitude of about 9,000. We'll be a little below there, but so we can know that we need to apply some speed brakes to uh, get the aircraft down. Now we'll go back into flight level change to get those speed brakes out there, and the thrust is going to come to idle, and it's going to come down in a hurry. Um, one of the beautiful things about FMS speeds, and when we leave it there, is it'll recycle itself to 250 knots as well when it decides it needs to decelerate to 250 for the 10,000 foot limit, or whatever limit you put in the MCD we showed you earlier. So when you think of the aircraft's climb and descent, you need to think of it as speed on thrust or speed on elevator, which is just slightly different than what we're used to uh, in other aircraft. Um, speed on elevator is great for climbs, and uh, if you need to come down in a hurry, it's one of the better ways to descend. However, typically in the real-world aircraft, I will descend in flight path angle, and I'll keep that at two and a half degrees um, for a pretty standard descent. This is where I know it's comfortable for me, my ears, and the, uh, the ears of the passengers on board the aircraft. And there's your recycle on speed, if I'll just point that out real quick, we went from 280 to 240. Um, so this is where I like to leave the aircraft until we hurry down. 
it also might not be necessary to hurry down all the time because of wake turbulence ahead of you, and you might want to use your you know, your, uh, your MFD with the TCAS on there to get an idea of where the other airplanes are. Um, all right, so that's all we have so for the uh, different modes of the uh, autopilot for climbing and descending. Next, we'll go into the approach setup and go from there.